If you're new to squatting with a kettlebell, or if you were wanting some extra refinement for your kettlebell squat, you're in the right place. Today, I'm gonna to go over how to properly squat with a kettlebell. I'm a doctor physical therapist. I love working with kettlebells. I think that they are great for functional use, how to hold your grip strength, and you can also work out at home with them if you can't make it to the gym. So first thing when we talk about squatting with kettlebell is how do we get it to our hold? One of the things you can do is clean. So basically what you're doing is you come over top of the kettlebell, you squat down towards it to pick it up, and then you kind of go a little bit more quickly up and grab a hold of the horns of the kettlebell. This rests it against your chest and holds it nicely in a spot where you can relax your arms downward. You can actually open your chest up a little bit, engage your lats, and you can almost even pull out against the kettlebell. This allows you to support your upper back as you are doing the actual lift. Now, when it comes to squatting as a whole, the mechanics are similar when it comes across the board for whatever weight you're lifting. We want to bend at our ankles, knees, and hips, drop towards the floor, and then press the ground away as we stand up. I have a preference that towards whenever you are dropping down, people tend to want to raise up their chest a whole lot more, or if you're a girl, think, think tits up. I want you to kind of relax that a little bit because you can get what's called a stripper booty or where you overarch your low back to actually make the move happen. You become so concerned about keeping your chest up that you lose the basic principles of what you're trying to actually strengthen. You're trying to strengthen your core, your quads, glutes, hammies, and calves. Those are the main groups that work to lower you down towards the floor with a squat and to push you away with the squat. Now, if we overarch our back, we extend our back, we have that hyperlordosis, whenever we're actually trying to keep our chest upright through this, then we lose the stability to actually use our hips properly, to support our knees properly, and our basis of our feet on the floor. We lose our stability at a point that matters most. And so I want you to think about almost tucking your tail a little bit or doing a slight posterior pelvic tilt, and I'm just ever so slightly, to make sure that you're keeping your trunk straight, still. That's how your spine is made to work. It's made to keep a nice elongated rod, and then your, your core, that cylinder that goes around you, that's what's giving you your stability. For then you to drive through your hips, drive through your knees, and use these muscles that we want to use for purpose. If we extend our back too much, then we lose that purpose. We lose that ability to control there. And so as you're dropping to the floor, think about your hips dropping back as you're gonna sit into a chair. Your knees are driving out just a little bit. Basically, it's just that they're, they're not gonna drop inward as you're going down. And that you're allowing your knees to travel how they're supposed to. Tra knees can go over your toes a little bit. It's okay. It's not this huge thing that you have to stop them. Because if you don't allow your knees to travel a little bit over your toes, then you're not going to be able to drop your butt as far backwards and down. This allows you to get more hip range of motion. It allows you to feel weighted and planted over your feet without you feeling like you're going to go backwards. One of the benefits of the kettlebell is that you're, it's resting forward, so it's in front of your body, and so it gives you a little bit more ability to drop back, aka you're then going to be weighted over your feet properly and you're going to feel balanced. That's the hardest thing about back squats and overhead squats is that you don't necessarily feel balanced over top of your feet. And that changes how your hips are going to drop down and back as you do the actual squat. And now that you're down in the actual squat, now you have to get your butt back up. And literally, I want you to think about your butt, your hips in this. And so you're going to push your legs out a little bit push your feet down into the floor, and that's what's going to drive your hips up and forward. Drive your butt up. Get it up and out of there. And so doing this makes it where you're not just going to straight push your knees down, use mainly your quads, but it allows you to use multiple different muscle groups at the same time. It allows you to engage and use your glutes. 
It allows you to use your hammies and your calves to put it all together and press that floor away. Also, it helps you to not overarch your back and to use that as well because that's part of the process and why people feel their back when they squat is that they start by actually thinking about raising their head up, raising their chest up, instead of just pushing the ground away. The rest will follow along after you start to push, and then you'll end up in this nice upright position. But a lot of times, if you just think about standing up, you will stand up and arch your back to make that happen, instead of standing up through your hips to make it happen. That's a huge problem when it comes to squatting. And so squat, as you see, go down low. You're going to bend ankles, knees, and hips. Okay, just drop it like it's hot. You just, you're going down with it. And then push that ground away, drive those legs out a little bit. That's where some people say like screen your heels into the ground. I like for people to almost think about your knees going out or your legs pushing out and your feet pushing down and away. Like you are pushing those that floor away, pushing your body away from the floor. This should allow you to have a cleaner squat. Now, if you can't go as far down, check out this video I did on how to work on your depth of your squat because your depth is important. It helps you to use more of the muscles in a bigger range of motion, but it's more important to do the squat properly in a limited range of motion for what you have right now. If you have a butt wink that comes in with this, this is where you go down as low as you can go and your pelvis starts to shift underneath of you. This usually means a couple different things. One is that you have limited range of motion in your hips. Something you can check out, and that one thing I go over in that video that I, that I popped up there, is are your hips limiting this range of motion? If it is, then we need to work on some hip range of motion to actually help your depth. It could be that your muscles just aren't used to working that big of a load that low. And so sometimes to get a proper control for your trunk to limit that butt wink, then we need to offload you. We need to deload a little bit, work on even just an air squat or even a bar, super lightweight, five pounds, something that helps you just like hold your forearm up top, but works on you getting lower and lower. You can do this with a bench. You can do this with different boxes that you have at the gym. You can do this with chairs that you have around the house, couches, they're low enough typically. And then you squat down to that and then you come back up from that position. Just touching it just barely, it gives you a point of reference. Holding here being your biggest factor. And so if you lose that core control, then you are going to either arch too much or you're going to butt wink, which is again that posterior pelvic tilt. Your pelvis just kind of sinks out from underneath of you. When you have either one of those, the butt wink or the the stripper booty, you lose your core control, which then makes you lose your power, lose your strength. As I said before, your hips then have nothing to hold on to to actually push against. It gives slack in the system that we don't want to have to be able to move the loads that we want. That's why it's so important to understand what's happening back there and how to control it and how to reach the depth that you want. 90 degrees doing, making that come all the way back down. The other thing to think about lastly in this is your thoracic spine mobility. If you are really having trouble with keeping that good posture through here, not we having rib flare as you were trying to sit up right, then we may need to talk about your thoracic mobility that you have through here. I have an old video that I did, you can check it out here, of thoracic mobility exercises with a foam roller that can help you out a lot. I hope that these tips helped you or will help you with doing a kettlebell squat, being able to work out from home if you want to, and or doing it at the gym with your kettlebells that you have there. Thinking about pushing that ground away, gauging, not having so much of a chest up position, but still being upright, but allowing that to dip forward a little bit as you go. And I hope to see you squatting soon. 
put in the comments if you have any other questions or things that you particularly liked about squatting with a kettlebell.